Hello everybody, I'm the Hamilton Hammer Game Channel. Welcome back to the New Order of the Last Days of Europe and to the People's Revolutionary Council. In the last episode, we did successfully defeat uh, Men Jiang. Uh, we, well, we white pieced anyways. We didn't completely defeat them. Defeat them. But we did. We did win. We were victorious. We kept our independence. But anyways, we, uh, we have this part of the tree to work through now. Um, before the uh, red spring is available to us, we need to wait for the winter to be over. So I think that'll be until we've got until 1963, and I think a lot of these are just 21 days. So we should pretty much get through most of this, possibly, maybe. Anyways, learn from our mistakes. While well, our soldiers fought their hardest for a cause, just and true, it is without mentioning that we were not the best prepared, equipped, or trained for the war. Japanese puppets and their near endless resources, their help from the best strategists in East Asia and support from Indonesia to the Kuril Islands meant that we were outgunned and outmatched. We are determined to not repeat the mistakes of the Menjiang War. In a series of military enhancements, we will build up our forces, establish new tactics and find new ways to combat our enemies. Yet, we also stand at a crossroads. There are some who wonder whether or not after spending so, spending so long so far for our native Russia, if we should uh, really turn our eyes back to Moscow or instead from the place of socialism in Mongolia. Will we be faced with these questions as we develop the doctrine for a new decade? Interesting. In the silence, a still small voice. That morning, Dorjen, Dorjen, Dorgan, rose earlier than usual. The cries of the past year had been particularly strident in the previous night, and the sheep roamed restlessly around poor Borgen as he yapped. Perhaps they startled too easily, or perhaps the mo movements of the pre previous months had kept them on perpetual edge. Whole convoys of trucks sweeping the plains here and here, here and there, sorry. The girls filling the endless silence. One or two of the flock had broken pasture altogether, fleeing for parts unknown, perhaps the light at uh, lights at night, and so simply driven them mad. Dorgen had never quite seen anything like it. The chill airs of dawn made for good tea, and little sounds of compressed leaves, she had hacked off a tree block in the bazaar in the southeast, where after a few minutes, fragrant. Uh, their essence swirled in the air as Dorgan uh, waited for the cup to cool, and that endless slowness where life itself seemed to curl thick and rich around the warm places, it was easy to lose oneself, to feel one's essence uh, fusing with an ancient rhythm that would outlast that moment. The eternal was interrupted by a series of horns and then a slow thundering as dots swarmed on the horizon. Dorgan watched masses of men, thick like forest trunks, march to view. All wore the garments and arms of soldiers. All wore the insignia of a sickle and a hammer, and their faces shone with uh, exultance. Behind them, trucks and bulky, treaded wagons rolled into view, bearing only one word in Mongolian and Russian. Victory! <clears throat> okay, I need to remember we've actually got our, uh, our army to modernise, so... Let me spend the PP. No, the PP, the other stuff. Uh, organization regain division. Time. Yeah, let's go for you. And I'm um, going to go with the air assault. One of change of 1%. Okay, cool. I can't do that now. What are we missing? Probably everything. Ah, the war in the desert. Of course. Wait, what's this? Charisma ah, charismatic. Eh, um, let's get aggressive assaulter on you. Or not. Oh, we don't have enough point inch, that's fine. Armrest and agitation. Marshal Alexander read and reread the report in front of him. In recent days the People's Revolution Council had been dealing with tension between the Russian and Mongolian factions in the council. The report read Agitation among the soldiers of the Mongolian army, increasing as the focus of the Revolutionary Council, has shifted to a more Russia ward stance. As it stands now, the unrest is low and low level, and mostly just the grumbling of some lower officers and enlisted men. In the interest of continued cohesion of the PRC, it is this officer's recommendation that one or two courses of action should be taken. Either the Council should grant concessions to the Mongolian contingent in order to calm their complaints, or there should be a constant. Uh, Concerted effort to crack down on and neuter the power of the Mongolian contingent. Wherever the choice is, it's imperative that they are put into motion as soon as possible to prevent open conflict between the Red Army Garrison and the Mongolian contingent. Uh, Marshal Alexander laid back his chair made up his mind. The Mongolians must be put to heel. Okay. 
Oh, they, that is a very nice little recovery rate we got there. Division speed from having the army civilian relationships balanced. We'll try and maintain that. Mm. Mongolian tactics. Yeah, sorry. We're going to be sticking with the Russian faction in this playthrough. I might come back and do the Mongolian one, but we're going to do this. If we are to turn our army back to the liberation of our homeland, then we must devise a strategy on how to go about this. While well, conflict in Mongolia is focused on mobility, in Russia we find that it will be armour and the power of mechanised assault that will win us back the helm of the motherland. While well, industry developing, we know there is still a long way to go before the industrial power of the Western Mongolian steep will be able to supply us as, as with armoured vehicles. But we know that with time and other methods of procurement, these will come to us. After all, the motherland is depending on it. Za Rudinu. Rudinau. Armour speed factor plus 0 0.05. Great. Right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Just kind of want to increase the civilian power, to be fair. You go away. Ah, I don't really care about scavenging, to be fair. Secure control wouldn't be a terrible thing to be doing. And the Siberian plan. Oh, yeah, what's the Siberian plan doing for us right now? My selling consumer goods. Let's grab and invest in heavy construction techniques. Uh, it brings down our consumer goods by 2.5, but increasing our construction speed by 7.5. So, yeah, we're on 5 consumer goods, 0 0.07 for construction speed. Factory output's down, I need to deal with that. The People's Apocalypse. A nation of writers, poets, and scholars, the universities of Tomsk uh, produce more manuscripts and manifestos than most people care to count. Yet One Piece, published anonymously, has begun to spread controversy far and wide throughout Siberia. The People's Apocalypse tells the story of a faceless scholar's journey throughout the fall of Central Siberian Republic, progressively encountering those who the author identifies as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Ivan Zavoloko, Genrik Yagoda, Alexander Pukrushkin, and Nikolai Andrev. Awaken in... Uh, Orotia, after falling ill, the scholar finds the people reduced to babbling madmen, clawing out their own eyes and pulling apart their scalps from a pestilence. Uh, pestilence, sorry. I uh, brought a line from uh, Zao Oloko. I'm definitely saying that wrong every time. Poisoning his people and licks are named Faith and Weakening. The body of the public. Chased away by the blind and corrupt, the scholar soon finds himself witness to the lands being set ablaze and the free thinkers abducted and prosecuted by Yagoda as blue-faced demons wage war against the people. Fleeing the slaughter, they come upon endless roads, buried under living skeletons, a famine consuming the land from uh, Pokrishkin's terrible betrayal, before finally witnessing Andrei's betrayal at Chris in the Ask, piercing the heart of the nameless soldier embodying the noble republic. Condemning the four men is bringing about the end of the promised people's realm, the story ends with the land destroyed and all four being consumed by madness under the weight of their own evil, turning to stone as hideous reminders of their deeds. Though it is left unanswered, Wherever anyone will survive this end of days is remem uh, to remember what has been lost. A haunting tale. That is a very, very haunting tale. Um, so we're going to get some military factories. It's going to be quite nice. What is this for? The, the helicopters? Crackdown. In early hours of the morning, soldiers were dispatched from their garrisons. The commanders have briefed them of the situation and they march with a grim fi uh, finality to do their duty. As they march, civilians hurried away from them and into their homes and units broke off to their areas of operation. Across the city of Kizil, troops from the garrison spread out and closed in on their targets. The building unrest between the factions of the uh, People's Revolutionary Council I boiled over into an all-out crackdown in the dis dissident faction. A squad of soldiers broke into the homes of dissidents and dragged them into the streets to be loaded up the way into trucks. Occasionally, gunshots could be heard as the dissidents fought back and refused the rest. Thankfully, the operation was successful. A few casualties on either side. With the success of the operation, the dissident faction has been successfully muzzled. Good. 
Oh, I get to choose again. Ah, nice. Nice. Right, so being strategy is done. Let's go ahead and do the industry of war. Modern war is like no war ever seen before. Men, soldiers, are no longer the most important force in the battlefield. It's the huge metal machines that dominate these beasts that fly or roll. These jet fighters, these main battle, uh, main battle tanks, these are what will win us the day. There is no hope in the world for an army that is not equipped with the, uh, with the time. Uh, these machines do not come from nowhere. They are not as easily replaceable as a soldier. No, they require vast industrial infrastructure to maintain them. Our goal is simple. The attainment is an utmost use of the air infrastructure to maintain a modern face, a modern force of the motherland. Try to get everything into the positives. I think they're our modern modernizing is going up very, very slowly. I think I'll actually offer a peaceful, peaceful, uh, well, peaceful annexation. Incorporates friendly elements. Okay. Here's a house of Rick. Anyways, aircraft loaded divisions. For millennia, it has been the horse that has dominated the steep as the horse with the fastest way of getting a man from point A to point B that anyone knew. But the fact has changed. And now there is one faster way, a better way, a more effective way to use the uh, use of a mobility in this terrain the helicopter. Which reorganized the divisions of hor old horses and their modern uh, with their modern counterparts by using the helicopter modernizer forces we believe will have the distinct advantage over any other force near us its ability to quickly transport forces over vast distances will allow us to orchestrate surrounding maneuvers and dominate the steep not a bad idea let's go ahead and get some of those bad boys in production that's a transport helicopter and that's the scouts. Right, let's just bend those a second. Let's just make sure I got everything. Oh, boy, anti tank. There we go. That'll do it, and then we'll get some fighters as well. Hmm. Yeah, I still need a bit off of doing that. That's fine. Oh, that's cute, be. Yeah, the time of recording this, I've just finished my, well, not just finished, but I've, I've been up since half five. My 13 hour shift absolutely killed me today. So at this point, I'm literally like a walking top king corpse. Well, maybe not as far as that, it's a bit, bit of an extreme. And the air cavalry divisions are finished, so let's go ahead and do it. Spearhead of the Red Army. With few tanks, with what few tanks our armies are, uh, have are all prepped, we have so few spare parts that a hard hit with a hammer could mean the effective destruction of our revolutionary front that has to undergo extensive modernizations. The inclusion of strong, modern, well equipped tank force in the People's Revolutionary Council's Red Army would put us above the poorly armed factions of reactionaries, traitors, and puppets that surround us. Their infantry would have no answer to the fleet of mechani uh, mechanical land ships. Swarming over this deep in the iron wave. Now the revolution yet unfinished. We'll see the glory realized from the tip of the 155mm cannon on the front of the steel beast. Okay, 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 whatever you float your boat. What's happening in the rest of the world? We'll have a wee look at that.
Alright, so... Yeah, I could do the deal with that factory output negative bonus that it's given us. At least I got my outdated, uh, not my outdated, my updated guns. Where's hell with the Siberian plan? Factory output. Huh. Come on. Did things start like kicking off for me? Social democracy, okay. The SAS. Every fucking time. Skirmishes in the mountains. Oh, what are we doing now? Right, anyways. Which of our army well trained and well organized still utilizes updated equipment. The equipment must be replaced if we are to be of any relevance in the regional affairs. The armies of our force to the east are weak lay armed with Japanese surplus spare the Japanese themselves uh, those to our north use equipment that some grandfathers used to fight the losing war during the great patriotic war a modern army would have no kills in the tundra or in the steep we would be the dominant local force this modernization will bring our red army back to its former height as the strongest and most motivated of our armed forces there's no way toward a liberated Russia or a liberated Mongolia at that without a modern army capable of bringing that dream to fruition Anyway, skirmishes in the mountain. In the borderlands of Mongolia, men of the Red Army and the Allies under the command of Lieutenant Leonid Morozov investigated rumors of incursions by Menjiang. Soldiers were joined by a stranger from the west. A mercenary tipped them off about an incursion by Menjiang's kilts. Uh, Leonid had been hesitant to trust the men, uh, trust the man, but the potential impact of a surprise attack from the fascist Mongolia could not be understated. As they passed through the uh, Mongolian passes, oh, uh, into Mongolia, he could tell something was wrong. Leonid ordered his men to come to the stop. The winds had shifted and the air was heavy with a tense air. Uh, he saw the glint of a scope a second too late. He was thrown off his feet as the bullet pierced his side. Leonid fell to the ground as his men scrambled for cover among the rocks of the pass. A hand gripped him by his uniform pulled up behind a large bullet. It was, a mer it was the mercenary. She rebound his side and returned fire against the enemy troops before into the pass. Dimly, uh, he could see this, his men struggling to lay down and fire against the uh, foes. A small group had made it back to the man who had saved him. Oh, okay. Wait a sec. Small group made back to supply to secure an anti-tank weapons ammunition. The man who had saved him barked orders to those around him, rallying his troops to better mount of defence. Thankfully, his men had taken surprisingly few losses and had begun to slowly push their attackers back. Lena glanced at the mercenary only to see that he had disappeared. End of the Red Army line, the mercenary ran into enemy fire with the RPG slung over his shoulder. Man Man leapt into a ditch before aiming his commandeered weapon at the mountainside above the enemy line. With a whoosh, the warhead flew into the mountainside and exploded. The cliff face crackled and began to fall into the valley on top of the enemy. As they crumbled the retreat from the last side, a cheer rang up from the, his surviving men. Three cheers for the mad mercenary. What an absolute mad lad. Cool. Well, we're in October now, so we'll be getting close to the winter fishing soon. I think it might actually be March of fires. I reckon we'll get through the majority of this tree. We won't get down here today. We'll definitely get through this. So I'm going to make this a shorter episode. I'm just going to get through the next two focuses after this, and then I'm going to call it a a day there because I'm absolutely shattered. I just want to make sure I have the second video to go out on, uh, well, this will be out on Wednesday. I just want to make sure I had a video ready to go. I could probably fall asleep on my computer right now. That's how tired I am. Alright, modernize the army. 
So, do I want to relax, train staff, maintain a professional army? Let's maintain a professional army. An army of professional volunteers and well-trained conscripts, an army that will always fight to the best of its ability. In Asian lands of Siberia and Russia, there exists a dearth of these professional armies. Possessing one will give us a huge advantage in the war. The East stands, to the East stands the mercenary conscript armies of Japanese Mongolia, only getting help from uh, the Japanese in the dire situations. To our North and West, Scotland reacts to warlord and uh, warlords. Call each other to focus on the party. Uh, on their pretty enemies to plan beyond. A professional army makes quick worth of these foes. As we venture back into our native lands, the well-trained and professional troops of our front shall lead the way. Has Burgundy finally done it? Probably. Probably. Oh my days, I'm like actually misclicking stuff. Oh, yeah, no wonder the Russian factories, uh, faction is dominant. I've actually paused it. Oh, dun, 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 dun. Aggressive doctrine. Our prioritized defense. We're going to be aggressive. An old saying goes, the best defense is a strong offense. What a true saying that is. It is this key idea that we'll, we will use as our compass navigating the complex political situation we find ourselves in in the Siberian Mongolian theaters. Let's always keep the enemy on the back foot. Giving them enough time to react, we'll surely see our less industry, industrially strong and significantly less well-equipped army defeated in battle. New main enemies, the Japanese, outdo us in every category. Their army is larger, their tanks are newer, and their planes are faster. And their pockets are numerous, but in also possible winning scenario, we have one key advantage. The male element of surprise. Let's always be prepared to use this, for it is our whole... Is our hope? Okay, okay. Oh no. Oh, almost was clicked on that as well. I'm actually having a mirror. Do you know what I think about it? It's probably not the best idea to be recording a video, but it's going to be a boring. It's a boring episode, anyways. Let's be honest. Let's be very honest. It will get interesting once we can start to kill everyone. We shall eliminate the provisionists. I kind of want to annex them peacefully because surely I'd get their divisions. Not that I, they have many divisions like. That's not how you check divisions, dude. Two of the four. That would be doing nicely. Right, let's do the old Union Remnants. We we feel as one of the many who intend to continue the dream that was the Union. It is our job to continue where the old Union left off. It was under our, our last leader, Bukharin, that the plan to build up Siberia and Mongolia was introduced. For to gain the support of the local population, as well as grow the industrial, agricultural and infrastructural power of our new home, we must act now to attain the steep. Through programs such as industrialization and the building up of local infrastructure, we believe we can turn Western Mongolia and the Siberian Plains into industrial areas. Not only will we be able to build up an infrastructure in a place that has uh, lacked and for so long, we will ha also create a strong base for future expansion and be able to support ourselves in the event of the conflict with the si Central Siberian warlords. Okay. But anyways, guys, I'm going to leave that episode there. So I know not a lot happened, but I'm just slowly losing the ability to actually record this. And I'm probably going to end up falling asleep in my chair. So to avoid that, I'm going to my bed now. So I hope you enjoyed this today's episode. And I'll be back with the uh, the good stuff tomorrow. Until then, take care. Sure, bye. Bye now.